no a Louis. Who can stand against the king? No one can. No Happy Resurrection Sunday. Welcome to church. Please let's be on our feet as we give God praise this morning. Begin to speak in the Holy Ghost and just worship Him. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. We have a living hope. We have a lively hope. Hallelujah. We are not without help in this world. Jesus is alive. He lives in us. We are the very ark of God. Go ahead, lift your voices and bless him. Say, Lord, I thank you for your death, for your burial, for your resurrection. Hey, Jesus is alive and we are risen with him. Kaleke pelusa pakataya, ala branda barakatila barakatolo kotia. We bless you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. Say with me, say by the power of the endless life in the blood of Jesus. Say I receive the mighty supply of God's Spirit in this service. Say let the rain of God's Spirit fall upon us. Let there be manifestations in our lives in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and speak in other tongues as you power those words as we receive in the name of Jesus. We receive the supply of God's spirit. 
the mighty supply of his spirit lord we receive the rain of your spirit all over this church online and on site we receive the rain of your spirit let there be manifestations in this service oh there is a feast prepared for us in this service we receive we receive in the name of Jesus. Until the Spirit be poured upon us from on high. The wilderness will be made a fruitful field. Let every fruitful field become a forest. Let every wilderness become a fruitful field. In the name of Jesus, let dead situations come alive. By the power of the endless life, in the blood of Jesus, Hallelujah. I want you to focus here as we declare these words. These are words of power, and we have our desires. Amen. Say with me, say, by the power of the endless life, in the blood of Jesus, say, the anointing for favor is resting mightily upon me. Say that one more time. Say, the anointing for favor is resting mightily upon me. Say, I'm experiencing unusual kindness, unusual access, and unusual acceptance in today's service and all through my week in the name of Jesus. Now go ahead and declare those words into your week. Speak those words into your future. I experience unusual kindness, unusual access. The Bible says in Esther chapter 2 verse 17 that the king loved Esther more than all the maidens. We are preferred. We are favored. The anointing for favor is resting upon us. We are not reproached. Our families are delivered from reproach. We experience unusual kindness, unusual access, unusual acceptance. The hearts of men are open to us. Abuja is kind to us in the name of Jesus. Finally, say God's word is taking root in my heart and bringing forth fruit speedily in the name of Jesus. Give him thanks as you declare those words. By the power of the endless life, the word of God is growing mightily and prevailing in my life in this service. It's taking root and bringing forth fruit in the name of Jesus. Give him thanks and give him a shout in this place. Glory!
everything for me. You've done everything for me. Long life, prosperity is mine.
your head. Oh, he people shout. One more time. Oh, clap your head. Oh, he be and shout.
Father, we give you thanks. Bible speaking in Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 19. It says, And out of them shall proceed thanksgiving, and the voice of them that make merry, and I will multiply them, and they shall not be few, and I will glorify them, and they shall not be small. Today is our thanksgiving service, and we're going to be releasing our thanks unto God this morning for how far He has brought us from the beginning of the month until this time. Our God is good. And his mercies and just forever. So this morning you will join me as we declare. Hallelujah. Lift your head, just worship. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow.
to minister with me. Don't be upset minded. Please. Are you following? Minister with me. Are you following? Don't be upset minded. He is Lord. He is Lord. Let the healing power of God is empty is no longer there he's alive and because he live you live let the healing power of God go through you heal in the name of Jesus from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet be healed in the name of Jesus thank you Holy Ghost let the bread of God fill you down let it quicken your system. He was wounded for your transgression. He was bruised for your iniquity. The punishment of God's peace was upon him. And by his stripes you were healed. He healed in the name of Jesus. Let the pains go. No more pain. Manamon satala barbara makata siala barbara makata. Ora para bolokosi kalabran tara bara bolokosi talaba. Ora para provocato. Kalabra bara bara baka talabra di barantos. Ha ya la manta ba ha. This feeling is fresh. This body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. It can't be cohabited with nonsense. And so now. You spirit of infirmity, I command you in the name of Jesus. Out! Now we feel to the overflow. Oh, there's a displacement. You are filled with the Holy Ghost. And everything is displaced. Now, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet, His mercy prevail over your life. Nala prata la branto la branca ta shata la baba la. Now, 
Ora panata susu kula rante pokus kataba. Ah, yela na 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 mokosi kala rante laba. Ayenu man can battle with the Lord against your life. You are God's project, and see yourself like that. Refuse the lying symptoms of the wicked beyond the sickness in your body. You are God's ordained project. You will not fail. You will not lose out. Says the Spirit of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I have taken over your battle, says the Lord. And now I fight for you. Hold your peace. Stand still. And see my salvation. Now, let power of accomplishment rest upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. Death could not hold him. What was that song? No, 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 that, that's not it. No, that's not it. Wrong can all this, Jesus is alive. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. the symptom in his body, lift him. I see the lifting power of God resting upon you. Breaking you from your struggles. A new perfume is coming upon you. It is a perfume of glory. Can I hear you pray everybody? Just pray. Let the weight of glory in this house rest upon him. Lift him up from obscurity. Lift him out of many struggles. Now in the name of Jesus. Alabratosh katali maragus kapatalaba. 
Madur Katila Bantush Katami Katani Kasko Tabaliba Malara Tete Tele Brekatusu Kapatali Bayata Malara Pata Shata Katoni Bayata Lord, we give you praise. Let the lifting power of God rest upon you in the name of Jesus. Today, experience the lifting power. Every limiting force over your life be broken. Now, Satan, you lose. You lose. Because you have lost in his life by Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. Let the healing power of God begin. Perfect all that is concerned, all that concerns you. In Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead, give him praise. Hallelujah. O rapana tantoni gelenglo goton shkalabrando shkataliman grakus kataba. O rana minakasa talaba baba baba. Yes. It's going to you, man. I see your faith is alive. It's alive. Receive in the name of Jesus. Oh, it's done, man. Can we give him praise? Bless the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Can we give God a shout of praise? Glory. Say he's alive. He's alive. Our God, Christ is alive. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Bible says that if Christ be not risen, then your faith is in vain. Hallelujah. And you are yet in your sin. Hallelujah. But we thank God that Christ is alive. We are no longer in our sins. Hallelujah. We now have the victory in Christ Jesus. Glory to God. You know, when the devil thought he had Jesus in the grave, he thought he had finished him. But he didn't know there was one more thing. Hallelujah. Christ rose from the grave. Hallelujah. He defeated him and took the keys of death, of hell. Took the keys away from him. And he ascended on high. And he seated at the right hand of the Father. Now today, we have the victory because Christ has obtained the victory for us. Can I hear a shout of praise? If you are victorious, why not share I'm victorious? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome every one of you to church this morning. I want to welcome your neighbor to this Resurrection Sunday this morning. Hallelujah. Happy Resurrection. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Christ didn't just rise today. He rose over 2,000 years ago. Somebody cracked. I was in a group yesterday and somebody was asking, can I come to your house, come and eat Easter rice? And the lady responded. She said that, her, that Jesus is not risen yet. That she's still mourning. I said, ah, when I read it, I was like, ah, Jesus, is, you are still mourning. Your Christ. Glory to God. We are not mourning. Hallelujah. We have the victory. Glory! Over 2,000 years ago, we had the what? The victory. Hallelujah. Can we take our greed as we rise up on our feet and lift up our right hand? Hallelujah. Repeat after me. I'm a man of honor. I give honor and I receive honor. I'm an excellent person. The spirit of excellence is upon me. I am love. I love and I'm loved. I'm an effective and an efficient leader. I'm a person of prayer. And my first response to every situation is prayer. Can we do it together? Prayer after prayer after prayer after prayer. We pray. Glory to God. Please, you may be seated. Welcome to the Fort Church, a place designed by God to mold you into a refined leader and a battle-tested weapon for His work. This is home, and we're delighted to have you here. We're a people of love, excellence, honor, leadership, and prayer. 
where a mighty army rises from the face of the earth, giving effective leadership to our generation. Join us at Nafila Cade and Water Park every Sunday by 9 a.m. for our Sunday worship service and Thursdays by 5.30 p.m. for our Holy Ghost service. Experience growth with impactful resources carefully curated by our lead pastors, such as Let Us Pray Volume 1 and 2 and Powered by Blood by Reverend Emmanuel Opara, along with Life Slants by Pastor Ifejola Opara. Find this enriching materials at the book stand. Access all messages from our lead pastors on Telegram at the Fort Church Media One. Engage with our online community and tune into our services on Facebook, YouTube, and Mixella. To get more information on our activities, visit our website at www.fortng.org or put a call through to our call center at 0701. 777-7096 or 0912-387-0285. This service was specially designed by God to move you into your season of the mighty harvest. Prepare for a great shift in your life. Thank you for being here. We love you. Welcome, welcome. Please permit me to tell you a story. It's a story all taught by God and currently unfolding in our time. It's a story of an army of men and women who shook their world, conquered territories, broke through limitations, and would not take no for an answer. This is the chronicle of a people whose unwavering faith moved mountains, causing them to vanish or be leveled to the ground. However, this story didn't start like this. In the early 2000s, God spoke to the Reverend Emmanuel Opara, instructing him to lead my people to pray, make my work easier on the earth, and to also build a sanctuary that would be a cover from the wind, a river of water in a dry place, and a shadow of a great rock in a weary land. God envisioned a mighty army of men and women rising from the face of the earth with the word of God in their mouth and the strength of God in their heart. With the word of God in their heart and the strength of God in their mouth, going to and fro the face of the earth, giving effective leadership to their generation. The Reverend Opara was tasked with guiding these individuals by precept and by example to become influential leaders for their generation. With unwavering faith and meticulous preparation, the fourth church was born. Its inaugural service was held on February 9, 2020 at the Sharon Ultimate Hotel, Garaki, FCT Abuja. <laughs> of his modest turnout, the garden witnessed the tangible presence of God and undeniable manifestation of spiritual gifts. As the world grappled with the challenges of the COVID-19 pandemic, the fourth church persevered, emerging stronger and more resolute, adding a second service to accommodate the growing congregation. Hello world, I'm here to announce to you that COVID, coronavirus, is dead on arrival. I command in the name of Jesus. I speak to everyone under the sound of my voice that fear is expelled from your life in the name of Jesus. I speak hope to you. Jesus Christ died for us. There's nothing to fear. There's hope for you. There's life for you. There's life on your path. Therefore, death is swallowed up by that life in the name of Jesus. This was followed by the birth of the new generation church for the young adult on September 4th. 2022. By July 2nd, 2023, the Fort Church had outgrown its initial confines 
and relocated to the expansive Nafil Arcade and Water Park. A garden which had started with a handful of people is now a mighty city, the fortified city. Now, in its fourth year, the fourth church stands as a beacon of hope, touching countless lives across Nigeria and beyond. Stories abound of transformed lives, miraculous unions, and supernatural blessings embodying the fulfillment of Isaiah 32, verses number two. Yes, every story has its end, but ours, different, is far from its final chapter. In fact, it's merely the beginning of an epic yet untold. Yield your members a living sacrifice. Tell God this body is yours. I present them to you. Let me have you do that right now. Look to him and tell him. I present my mind, my will, my emotions. I present my faculty, my intellect. All that I am is yours, Lord. Go ahead, just go ahead, just go ahead.
But because of what you've done Not because of what I've done But because of who you are The story of Easter is the story of forgiveness. It's how Jesus was able to forgive us all. I don't know whether you have thought about it. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who was seated on his throne, chilling and enjoying himself as King, suddenly status changed came to earth, took off his crown, stripped himself of all his power. I mean, heaven backed him up, but he stripped himself of it all and came for you and you killed him. We killed him. And he was going, you know, this morning the picture was painted and he was going to the cross. Words, quiet, not saying anything because all he needs to just say is, Father, I can't do this. And the angels will come upon earth and redemption story will be thwarted. But God refused to say anything just so that redemption will be complete. And he forgave us. And he cleansed us of all unrighteousness. Oh, to whom much is forgiven. I don't know about you. I didn't do anything to deserve this death. You didn't do anything to deserve this death. I mean... No matter how sanctimoniously clean you think you are, hell was still waiting for us. Yet this God took hell away just by dying on the cross. And he did better. He didn't die and remain in the grave. <laughs> he died on Friday. Yesterday I told somebody, by this time, Jesus is in hell. Killing Satan and his God. Do you understand? setting Abraham and his people free, preaching the good news to them. Yesterday it was happening. Then this morning, 12 a.m., midnight, hey, the angel came to the tomb and opened the tomb. And lo and behold, our king was arisen. 
And he's no longer in the grave. I don't know about you, and I was seated here, and I heard when choir was singing, this could not hold him captive. That same power that raised him from the dead and quickened him, quickened him with mortal bodies. You know, somebody said yesterday, had that passed, and she was not embalmed. Oh, and, and he was going to start decaying. Jesus already started decaying. Three days, the flesh is, is fickle, mortal. In the grave, it has started decaying. But on the third day, the power, the power of God himself, the power of God himself took the grave and squeezed it and opened it up and our God, man like us, rose from the grave did what no one could ever do and would ever do oh that the angel said who can deliver us and they found none yet Jesus said I will go and he went for you he went to the grave for you he came out of the grave for you because of you he could have just remained there and rested <laughs> no. but he chose to come alive so that you will come alive again I see today that depression has broken See, captivity has broken. Just like nothing could hold Satan in the grave and keep him there. Nothing can hold you and keep you down. Today, addictions are what they call it. Mere addictions. Because there's a power that can raise a dead. Three days in the ground. And that power, he said, if the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, that same spirit, that same spirit, when we got born again and we received the Holy Spirit, that spirit that you received on Pentecost, that spirit is the one that raised Jesus from the dead. And that is the spirit that lives inside of you. So the Bible says, if the spirit, if the spirit, do you have the Holy Spirit? If that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells inside of me, that spirit is giving life to my mortal bodies. That spirit is giving life to my finances. That same spirit is giving life to my children. Is giving life to my marriage. Nothing can hold me bound. If that spirit, if, if, but that if was fulfilled in Christ. And that if was fulfilled the moment you received the Holy Ghost. And that spirit lives in you. Oh, I feel the power of God in my hands. See, as I speak to you, you know who you are and who I'm speaking to. That addiction, that addiction, that lying symptom. <laughs> That lie Satan has hovered over your head. Like the drama. Those names they've called you. Those names you've called yourself. Those things that have kept you down. Today they lost their power over you. Today addiction is broken. Addiction is broken in the name of Jesus. Oh, and you foul spirit of hell. Right now I speak to you. Hear the word of the Lord. Jesus, Paul's principalities and powers. He made up a show of them. Triumphing over you in it. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, it has triumphed over you. I command you lying symptoms of hell. I command you spirit of addiction. I command you fall and unclean spirit. I command you spirit of shame and reproach. Out! Now in the name of Jesus, I command you forever punished. Addiction is broken. You will go and you will look for that thing that you used to taste lost after. And it will no longer be there again. Because that spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. He laid aside his majesty for you to live in the newness of life. Help me open to 1 Peter 2 9. And he not only died for you, he not only raised you from the dead. Like that story, after he raised you, he kept you seated. On the right hand of the Father, above 
all principalities and powers. You might be here right now, holding sins to people, holding grudges against people, but there's a God that forgave you, your sins and your grudges. If God could forgive you, everything you did, who are you not to forgive another? Who are you to hold them to their sins? Easter is a season of forgiveness. It's a story of forgiveness. That stone standing in your heart, the stone of unforgiveness, I speak to it now. Command it to melt away. In the name of Jesus. First Peter 2 9. After everything he did, he says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Jesus took you from darkness and brought you into light and crowned you and made you. He did not go about looking for, no, hand-picked. He picked you out of the crowd. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people, different, unique. Hey, that you should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness. You are no longer in darkness. The authority of darkness around you has been dispelled. You are now king priests called forth to enjoy the, the forces of Gentiles, to enjoy the goodies of the nations. He has brought you, he delivered you and brought you into the good life. Easter is the good life. Say, I am a chosen generation. Say, I'm a royal priesthood. Say, I'm a holy nation. We know how we do it in this house. Open your mouth and confess. Say, I am a peculiar people. Say, I'm out of darkness. I, I am in God's marvelous light. Say it again. Say, I'm out of darkness. Say, I'm in God's marvelous light. Say, Satan, you have no hold over me. Right now. I command you out of everything that concerns me. And I keep you out. Get out of my mind. Get out of my affairs. Get out of my, of my finances. Get out of my marriage. Now in the name of Jesus. Hey, he could not hold Satan. Jesus now, he can't hold you down. And Jesus doesn't have to die again. He has died once and for all. Once and for all, your sins has been taken care of. That spirit, if, and is in you already, and is giving life to your mortal bodies. There is no death on your path. There is no death on your path. Eternal life is at work in you, and is giving life to your mortal bodies. In Jesus' name, give God a shout. Give God the glory. Celebrate Easter. Hallelujah.
erzählt. It's time to celebrate the Savior and His worth. Let's shout because we know He lives and we are certain His love has set us free. The enemy is defeated, yeah. Sickness is defeated, poverty is defeated. The enemy is defeated, yeah. Understand just why we dance Let me tell you how this thing went down News spread so very fast People came for miles around And every town This will be the day the Lord of glory Will be crucified in my place and In your place And in her place And the lamps slain before the foundation of the world Yeah, yeah They took my Savior down off of that rock across They laid him in a tomb I think my hope was truly lost but the third day came around and he brought the reading of the life, yeah, yeah. Brought the reading of the life, yeah, yeah. It brought the reading of the life, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Say, the stone was rolled away. I say the stone was rolled away And just Jesus stood big and bang Snatching the key from hell and the grave I say the stone was rolled away I say the stone was rolled away And if you know he came, he lived, he died, he rose Somebody say with me He came, he, came. he died, he rose He's alive from me together say say everybody come on yeah Christ is reason just like he said our Lord and Savior rejoice and celebrate celebrate say one time say say he lives Jesus lives Christ is reason
I'll take the chorus one more time. He leaves. Let's go. One, two, three. Say. He leaves. He leaves. Christ is risen. Christ is risen just like you said. Our Lord and Savior. No longer dead. Say. Say. Rejoice and sound. Celebrate. Say. Say. He leaves. Jesus lives. Say, our Lord and Savior, no longer dead. Say, rejoice and celebrate, because he's alive. Yeah. Yeah. The stone was rolled away. Say, the stone was rolled away. It was rolled. The stone was rolled away. Say, yeah. Stone was rolled away. Yes, it was. It was. The stone was rolled away. No, the dust. Say he lives. He lives. Christ is risen. All of the Savior. Say we. He's alive. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and just worship him. He's alive. Can you go around the seven person and tell them happy resurrection Sunday? And let me see the expression of joy in your heart as one who understands what this day holds for us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, you love brown. Happy Resurrection Sunday. I can see some of you doing that. Celebrate. Rejoice. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. Please be seated. He's alive. I say he's alive. I say he's alive. Is alive again, is no longer away. He's alive again, he's no longer where he lay. He's alive again, I, I can, can hear the angels sing. Let it all rejoice, he's alive. He's alive again, he's alive again. The soul to roll the way. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive again. I can hear the angels sing. Let all the world rejoice. He's alive. Let's sing it again. He's alive. He's alive again. Brought the soul to roll the way. He's alive again. Ah. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive. And all the world rejoice. He's alive. I say he's alive. He's alive again. All the souls they rolled away. He's alive again. He's no longer where he lay. He's alive. I say he's alive. I say he's alive. You know, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the Bible says, if Jesus did not rise, our faith would have been in vain. That word vain means unprofitable. There will be no profit to our faith. But that he's alive means our faith produces results. You need to know what this day holds for you. Mankind were condemned to death by the sin of one 
death reigned upon all, even those who have not sinned after the similitude of Adam. Death reigned upon humanity, and the wages of sin is death. And not just death, death is not cessation of existence, it's banishment. You'll be separated from life. After you're separated, your soul separated from your body. And then you're born in a lake of fire eternally. Eternity is not one billion years. The whole earth is approximately 7,000 years. I mean, from when creation is approximately 7,000 years. 7,000. All from Adam to now is about, about 7,000 years, approximately. But I'm saying that eternity is more than a billion years. I don't know what you're thinking. If you began to born from when Adam was born till now, you have not started eternity. Are you following? That is what we deserved. That's what the best of man deserved. Until Jesus came. He came. He came. He came. The one who created eternity agreed to be conceived as a seed in a virgin. It's risky. Anything could have happened. I know some of you say, ah, is it not God that was behind it? Nothing can happen. Mm. <laughs> you have to understand how this world functions. It could have gone wrong. If God could have just done anything the way he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. When Herod wanted to kill the children from two years and below, God would have said, no problem, my angels are here. Nothing will happen to Jesus. Is that not what the world would have said? No. Instead, in a dream, he appeared to Joseph and said, run. What, what did he say? Run. Run. If he didn't run, he would die. Hey! And God would have been destroyed at two years old. Could have died. I know. I mean, you, I mean, you can't conceive it. It was possible. If Joseph did not even respond to the will of God, if Joseph, if Joseph also was not sensitive to see and to hear, Jesus would have died. One day, he was asking me a story, you know, and it's good when you study the Bible and those questions. Ask it. He says, "I want to find out something." You know, that's this scripture that is disturbing me. Jesus one day told his, his brothers, he said he's not going to go to the feast. He said he will not go. But after he went, this is like Jesus lied. In John 7, are you following? They came to him and told him, nobody does these things openly, I mean publicly. These miracles you do, go to the feast, show yourself publicly that the world may see you. Jesus told them, he told them, your time is always here, but my time is not now. You guys can go to the feast. I'm not going to the feast. So, to answer him, I told him, let's start from how the book started. He said, Jesus began to walk secretly, not openly, because the Jews sought to kill him. They sought to do what? To kill him. Because of that, anointed man was hiding. Was hiding. Why? If he didn't hide, they would kill him. If they cannot kill him, whether he didn't hide, why would he be hiding? I want you to think. He was hiding because it was possible to be killed. And if they killed Jesus before the cross, the sacrifice is wasted. The sacrifice must follow process. He must shed those blood from, from, the, from Gethsemane. Every one of them was significant to the king's court. Then to Golgotha. Then he must die the death of a cursed one. He must. If he didn't do it, the sacrifice will not be complete. If they put a knife and killed Jesus, it would have been a wasted sacrifice. If they stoned him to death, it would have been a wasted sacrifice. So Jesus was hiding. He couldn't op come openly. He was waiting for the timing of the Spirit. So when, he, when the brethren went, the Bible says he came from behind. When it was time that the Spirit's constellations were gathered, he actually spoke to them publicly. He stood up and said, Ho! Oh, is there anybody who is thirsty here? Let him come and drink. For like the scripture says, out of his belly 
shall flow gushing torrents of living water. My point here is that this seed that was conceived could die. Jesus took the risk to allow frail humans to take care of him. Are you following? Mary breastfed Jesus. That's your savior. Reduce himself to man. Because that's the only way we can be saved. And in the fullness of time, he died on Friday. Hell was rejoicing. You know, yesterday I was telling them in the house. Why the, resur- the Bible says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Why was he saying that? It's the same thing that the Ephesians one was saying. That the eyes of our understanding being enlightened. That we may know. That we may know the hope of this calling. That we may know the riches of the glory of God's inheritance in the sense. Then that we may know the exceeding greatness. The surpassing greatness. Hey! Of his power that is at work in us. He's at work in us. This power is like the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead. Far above our principalities and powers and rulers and dominion and every name that is named. You know what? When Jesus was about to die, all the demons everywhere in the world, all of satanic forces everywhere in the world, left everything they were doing to come and ensure that Jesus failed. All of the powers in hell. Let me give you an idea of what it is. Right now, if you have any demonic issue or is there any demonic issue happening somewhere else, it cannot be all of Satan's power. Satan cannot be in one place. I mean, Satan cannot concentrate all of his power in one place. Hope you know that outside satanic influence, men will receive Jesus instantly. Hope you know. Take away satanic influence, men will be drawn to Jesus. If our gospel is hid, it is hidden from those whose eyes the prince of this world has blinded so the glorious gospel will not shine. So if you take satanic influence from them, everybody will be saved and Satan knows it. So Satan cannot leave the whole world and come and be fighting you alone in Nigeria. No, it's a bad market. But the moment he does that, everybody in Ethiopia will be born again. Everybody in Cameroon will be born again. Everywhere in America, everybody will be born again. So no, what he has done is distribute his network. Some demons in Nigeria have never visited Cameroon. No, they can't go to Cameroon because they are mandated. I mean, it's a structure. They are stru- and I'm very serious. They are structured. Though. They are in one place. As much as you think that this is terrible, it, they, they are localized. Doing what they are doing in their locality. That's why if you go to India, there is some kind of demon you met. You have never met them yet. They are all those serious, serious, serious. That's why we don't do that. Say amen. On the lighter side, amen. Are you following but, but, but follow me. Don't miss it. But when Jesus was about to die, they told everyone, everywhere you are, gather. We must stop this prince of light from, from rising. So they came upon Jesus. Then the power that came upon Jesus is called the resurrection power. Mana kotopolo dibaya. La ruzo breketu magandeba. That's the highest power. All of hell. All of hell. The Bible says he spoiled principalities and power. He made open show of them. Triumphing over them in it. They couldn't hold him. My brother, they couldn't hold him. My brother, they couldn't hold him. My sister, they couldn't hold him. They couldn't hold him. God exerted the highest power in raising Jesus. But guess what? This power was demonstrated so that you can know the power that is behind you. Yeah. That's the power that is behind us now. So when you say, when you say, in the name of Jesus, don't try to check yourself and say, did I say the name very powerfully? Did I say it with intention? Did I say it with some, some prophetic voice? It has nothing to do with you. You're like the traffic police. Have you seen some of those frail girls stand there and say, you stop in a proper setting. If you touch this girl, 
you know that the Federal Republic of Nigeria is behind her. It's like a cop killer in the U.S. If you kill a police officer, one, they bring everything that they have to set you out. They use you as example to every other person that when you see a cop, you avoid it. The power behind it. The power behind us is the resurrection power. So it was necessary that he, that he rose from the dead. So we can see the demonstration of that power. A man dead three days in the grave. Manonon toli beruza patolaba. When the angel came, they rolled the stone away. Roll it. The angel kicked the stone. I don't know whether to preach on roll the stone away. You know, in, in John 11, that's what the first Jesus said. Roll the stone away. He was speaking of what will happen to him also. In his time also, the angel rolled the stone away. There's always this thing that has to happen if you have to wake up from the grave of life, from limitations. Stones, condemnations are lifted. Today I command every stone over your life. Be lifted in the name of Jesus. By the resurrection power of God, I command every stone standing between you and destiny. Be rolled away. Be rolled away in the name of Jesus. And that stone was rolled away. And our Savior rose. He rose again. He's alive. I say he's alive. I say he's alive. I say he's alive. <laughs> We're serving a living Jesus. He's alive. He's alive. That's why everybody I'm speaking to here will go to heaven. Say amen now. Because he's alive. He paid for all. And prepared a room for you. Now he's waiting for you to come when it's time. You will not die before your time. You will live long. But when you live here, you will come to a home prepared by this vicarious sacrifice. I think it's time to just celebrate this Jesus. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Thank him. Can you just thank him? It wasn't you that's on my side. This life for finish me. Yeah. Yeah. I see the wonders of your hands Only you, only you has given me Plenty, plenty, plenty Plenty, plenty blessings for me Many, many, many hey. Many reasons to say I pray And I love And I, and I don't take it for granted so I just want to say that I, I really love you. I really love you, Lord. Yeah. I really, really love you, Lord. Say that. If it wasn't you that's on my side, this life will finish me. Oh, 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 oh. I see the wonders of your hands, only you, only you that's keeping me. Plenty, plenty, yeah. Plenty, 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 yeah. Plenty, plenty, plenty for me. Many, many, many. Many reasons to say and say I love you, and I don't take it for granted. So I just want to say, I really, really love you, Lord. Say that I need you. Just lift your hands and just say thank you. Do not take this immeasurable grace for granted. Just go ahead and thank him. Thank him for his resurrection power. Can you go ahead and give the Lord a shout? Hallelujah. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Help me celebrate Ford music. Help me celebrate them. Thank you. Hallelujah to Jesus.
Tell the boy he's alive. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives. All fear is gone. Because I trying to look for God. No, but he is the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Say, my Jesus is alive. I you know, just to touch on one of the purpose why Jesus had to die. The sin of Adam brought mankind to where they were blind. Man could not see again. They were, were groping in darkness. Their physical eyes were open, but they, they couldn't see again. Their heart was darkened. The Bible says it was alienated from God. They were separated from God. Light left them. And man lived in darkness. So one of the primary things that Jesus came to do was to give sight to the blind. Amen. And was to open the ears of those who were deaf. And to give receptive heart to those who receive him. And that's my prayer for you today. Every symptom of blindfold of deafness, of satanic covering over your heart, today be lifted. Today be lifted. In the mighty name of Jesus. I was praying and my dear sister Remy was leading a particular prayer in the house and he just, he just talk. And I want us to read something right now. Let's start with Isaiah 35 verse 4 to 5. Receive your eyes open in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, let your eyes be open. Let your heart be open. Let your ears be open. You will hear, you will see. You will be sensitive to what God is doing. Say amen and amen. amen. Say I believe I receive in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 35 verse 4 to 5. It says, say to them that are of, of fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come. He will come with vengeance. Even God with a recompense, he will come and save you. Say amen. amen. So Isaiah was prophesying about what Jesus will do. But right now in Christ Jesus, this scripture is fulfilled. So look at the next verse now. Look at the next verse. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Say amen. amen. He will come. Remember he says he will come to save you, is that not? Then when he comes to save us, what will happen? The eyes of the blind will be what? And the ears of the deaf shall be what? Creativity development is breakthrough with vision. Is that you have seen something. That the day God opens your eyes to see something. There are people behind you who want to follow you because of what you have seen. Because in your light, they will see light. So that what Jesus came is so that your eyes be open. Right now, even for us as Christians, the difference between one Christian and the other is what they have seen. Is what you have seen. Apostle Selman said here, the reason why you are not experiencing what you experience is, is either one, 
is either you don't know something or there's something you don't believe. Maybe you know it, but you don't believe it. If you don't know it, if you can't see it, because belief and sin is the same thing. In, 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 in the Old Testament, the Bible says, and when, when the serpent was, you know, was entered the camp and they were dying, and Moses cried to the Lord, the Lord told Sam, um, Moses, take a, a serpent made of brass, a brazen serpent, lift it up on a pole in the middle of the camp, and it shall come to pass, anybody who is beaten by the snake, if they look, if they do what? If they look, they will not die. So, all you need to do, no matter what the snake is, don't try looking at the snake. Take your eyes from the snake and look where? Look at, the, look at it. But when Jesus was telling or quoting that scripture, in his time, he said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so also shall the Son of Man be lifted, that whosoever believes in him shall not die. Look at it. In the Old Testament, it said just like, just exactly like Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. The same way, the Son of Man will be lifted up. Oh, hallelujah. Was he lifted? He Was he lifted? He, like the, 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 the drama tried to portray. He hung on that cross that if any man will look. But Jesus now changed the word look and says that if you believe, that means believe is looking. Believe is looking. Believe is a function of what you're seeing. But that Jesus' death was so that the eyes of the blind will see and the ears of the deaf will be unstopped. I pray for you today. Everything that has held you from seeing the vision of God in your life, be broken, Amen. be lifted Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Anything that has stopped you from hearing God with precision and accuracy. Everything that has affected your sensitivity to the almighty God today from today. I pray that they be removed. Amen. As you sleep today, the Lord seal your ears with instruction. Amen. See the dream and understand your dream. Amen. Let your eyes be open to see. Amen. Receive discernment here today. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Is, it has exactly what Jesus came to do. That's one of the primary things Jesus came to do. Is that your eyes be able to see. That you don't grow up in darkness like the world. That the world are saying, we don't know what tomorrow is going to be. There are people who know. They are unperturbed because they've seen something. They can see a glorious future. They have seen that the word of God says, mark a perfect man, his end is peace. So he has seen the end. From God's word, light have shined. Mark a perfect man, mark him. Is he a perfect man? Mark him. His end shall be prosperity well-being, wholeness, soundness, nothing missing, nothing broken. He has seen something. He said, watch this man. The Bible has said he has seen that the part of the jaws is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. It's not what I'm quoting, it's what I'm seeing. I have seen that my tomorrow is better than my today. I have seen that my today is better than my tomorrow. It's what you have seen. And once you see it, you will leave it. If it stays strong enough in your, in your, in your, in your, in your eyes, you will, you will come into it. And eyes be open. So we see, look, look 24. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I command your eyes open now in the name of Jesus. Say, neighbor, your ears be open now in the name of Jesus. Did you release your faith in what you're doing? Look 24 from verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus. This is after resurrection, which was from Jerusalem, about three score for long. That's about 60. Next. And they talked together all of all these things which had happened. That's about Jesus' death and his resurrection. And it came to pass that while they communed together, and reason, Jesus drew near and went with them. Next verse. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. Hey. Hey. Their eyes were what? They were not physically blind. But Jesus was what? with them. They couldn't recognize Jesus. There's no greater blindness than the blindness inside. Are you following? 
I mean, they were with Jesus, but their eyes were beholding. They were not blind physically, but they couldn't recognize Jesus. And he said unto them, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? Continue. Continue. Next verse, please. And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, Cleopas said unto him, answering, and said unto him, are you, are you a stranger in Jerusalem? And are you not, don't you know the things which have come to pass there in these days? Next verse. Thank you. And he said unto them, what things? And they said unto him, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word, before God and all the people. Mighty word and before all God and all the people. Next verse. And, now, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Next verse. But we trusted, we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Pause here first. Let me tell you something. Do you see that everybody walked Jesus for three and a half years? They couldn't see what Jesus was talking they couldn't. The disciples could not see it. They didn't see it. They didn't see. Well, Jesus, Jesus was not coming to restore a physical kingdom. Everything he was saying, their eyes could not see it because he needed to die for their eyes to be open. It is by his sacrifice that true sight can be given to a man. Without the death of Jesus, you can't see. He told them, there are so many things I want to say to you, but you cannot bear it. You cannot bear it now. How be it when the spirit of truth is come? He will, because now, as he said right now, there's nothing I say. You can't, you can't hold it. But when I die, when I rise, then the spirit of the Lord will come and communicate the same thing. Are you understand? Can you imagine that these guys were with Jesus? All those teachings he was teaching, their eyes, you know, they were waiting for when Jesus will stir up a coup. Are you following? Redeem Jews from those who are holy. That's what they were expecting. That's why even John, um, John and his brother, what are his brother's name? The sons of thunder. They are practiced how to shoot thunder. They, they are practiced because they are planned out. This school, all those guys using sword and knife, they will see what we have. So one day something was happening. Jesus, John and his brother asked Jesus, Sir, do we call thunder for them? <laughs> Because in their mind, there's a physical kingdom that is coming. They couldn't see. That's why when he died, they were sad. Because they couldn't see the bigger picture. That is only when a seed falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. But when it dies, it brings forth much fruit. They couldn't see it. Because there's no way true sight is given to a man who is not in Christ Jesus. E.W. Kenyon said it long ago and I believe it. There is no hedonic nation without the revival of the new creation that have creative ability. Any nation that is creative in what they do, there has first been a revival of the new creation because that's only where light is. Go and study it. Any other person who has not had a revival in the new creation is a copycat. They copy what is, but they cannot create. Because creativity is only possible where a revival in this new creation uh, study history. That's why those who are uninformed talk about China and say China is godless, but they are producing that. You study the revival of China and realize that even Nigeria, we are playing compared to what China did. See, one time in China, there were over 100, over 200 and something million Christians underground. And these 200 and something um, million Christians were meeting to pray periodically on broken chain for 50 years. When they have proper prayer meeting, it's 72 hours. When they have brief meeting in the morning to go to work, it's four hours. And they pray this for 50 years. The first time I, I, I stumbled into that documentary was one of those free-to-air channels that was showing the underground covens. Even right now, some of the dance halls you see in China, some of the dance halls you see those little kids, are kids that have been trained to lead other kids by a discreet way to Christ Jesus. They still remember going on there. You cannot have creativity without first light. The Bible says that that light was a light that lightened men. In him was that life. And that life was the light of men. You can't have light outside that life. 
Let nobody deceive you. Some persons may try to rewrite the narrative. There is no light outside Christos. They couldn't see it. They were listening to Jesus. Yes, they couldn't see it. They thought that Jesus was going to cause a coup, overthrow the Roman Empire, and establish a new kingdom. They were sad. That's why everybody was lobbying. Even the mother of those two boys also came. They said, Jesus, in your kingdom, in your kingdom, in your kingdom, I come to beg you for something. Let's just talk, my son. One will sit on your right hand. One will sit on your... That means I am lobbying that they should occupy a prominent position in your kingdom. Say amen. They couldn't see what Jesus was bringing. Because my brother, my sister, light is only possible by the communion of his body and by the communion of his blood. Outside the vicarious sacrifice of Jesus, you will not see. Why do sinners argue the way they argue? They cannot see. They are blinded by the enemy. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Whose eyes the God of this world has blinded so the glorious gospel will not shine on them. Continue. Can we continue the scripture where we're reading? I know I have a very short time, but we'll be able to just capture this because your eyes open. There's a miracle in this house. Amen. You will see what will give you real money. Amen. You will see it. Your eyes will be open to see. Amen. You will see possibilities. Amen. I pray your eyes be open. Amen. Where men can see, you will see. And you will lead them in that path where you have seen. Receive your eyes open. Amen. By the dead, burial, and resurrection, receive your eyes open. Amen. Haven't you noticed that people will steal money and steal money? And they don't know what to do with it. They don't know. They don't know. As investment, investments are everywhere. They can't see. Finally, they will go and do the one that every money will be lost. Because they are blind. They are blind. They can't see. I mean, you had a billionaire one time in your life. And you became broke sometime. Villagers and community of darkness were after you. I mean, you couldn't see. But give a man who can see. Just give him two million naira. Amen? Say amen. You know that he can grow money. Money can grow. Receive sight today. I say receive sight today. In the name of Jesus, receive sight today. Oh, I think I need to open here also. So, um, we're still reading chapter 24. Where are we? That's verse 1. Ma'am, your clothes is coming here. Thank you. Sorry. He and certain women also of our company made us astonished. They came and surprised us. This thing Jesus said, he said it. But he said they came and surprised us. I don't know what else you I'm saying. He came and surprised us, which were earlier the sepulchre. Next verse. And they said to us, Nesbos, and when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. We said that he was alive. Say he's alive. alive. This was surprising to people who Jesus took three and a half years to explain that this will happen. They couldn't see it. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels. We said that he was alive. It's God that gives eyes that see. It's God that gives receptive ears. I don't forget, I tell that story every time. When I was first going out with my wife, that was the time, you know, if you, you are getting married, you have to present your wife to yourself. Your wife is everything you have made her to be. That will may sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water with the word. I know some of you are waiting for ready-made wife. Then what you present to yourself might not be your own. It is something somebody downloaded for you, is it not? So I took out time, I was, I was giving my wife a book to read. I'm making her pray. I will be sharing some powerful truth. She just be saying, hmm. Hmm. I could see through that. This, this truth is not entering. No. I mean, then one day, she was listening to Crefutola. This happened, actually. She was actually listening to Crefutola. And then came and said, honey, honey, I want to share something with you. I said, what? He began, she began to tell me new truth. This is what I've been saying. You know? I've been saying this thing since but you know, I've also learned not to kill joy. Is that not? You say, oh, glory, glory. Man, man, let me hear again. Wow. The foolish thing to do as a man. Is that, to say, is that not what I'm telling you since? Don't do so, man. Don't do so. Amen. Man, don't do so. Don't say so. Did you hear what I just said? 
Don't say so. <laughs> Somebody has. Don't say so. <laughs> I don't want like, somebody's trying to distract me, but don't say so. <laughs> you know, I've been having great time with one story I've been telling. So even my leadership meeting, when I told it, we divided it into two. I said, Oi. <laughs> There's a difference between the way women think and the way men think. Is they are diff- they, they are going to be different to me, Jesus. Are you listening to me? So because of that, God tells us men. When you're married to your wife, live with them. The amplifier says, with, with an intelligent recognition. And just live with them after knowledge. That means, what he's saying is that, husband, and if you're going to get married, is counsel 101. Successful marriage counsel 101. You are going to study your wife till you die. <clears throat> okay. You don't want to be happy. You're going to study your wife Till you die. Study the way the woman thinks. It's different from the way the men think. And I also advise the women. Study the way a man thinks. Study, just know the way a man thinks. Uh, even though the direct command was the men who were commanded as men to live with your wife according to what? According to knowledge. So I told the story. Let me try telling the story. Oh God help me. Bring me back. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. So one of, our sis- one of our sisters, she comes for prayer, but she's in another church. So, she said, one guy came to her and asked her out. And asked her out. She said, the guy was not my spec. You know, it's not my spec. You know that kind of not my spec attitude. When he said not my spec, and he told the guy, you're not my spec. We can never be married. Anyway, the guy went. He gave the guy not my spec attitude. So the guy left. After three days, resurrection. <laughs> exactly after three days, they now met one day in fellowship. And I said, oh, sister, sister, I know you say I'm not your spec. I don't know why you can help me. There's this is your friend. That your friend that is in the choir. Can you help introduce us? Wait, wait. The girl lost it. She was mad. She was angry. So I asked my sister, was there anything wrong? The sister said, yes. Why will, why, why just three days? Yeah, why, why you are, why, why? Oh, there was war. And I've tried it with different, different, in different I've asked. The, the ladies cannot say no. That's not nice. Why, why would he even come to me again? Or only three days? Or this argument, we're not going to win it. So there's no need for the argument because I know the way the women are thinking. I know the way the men are thinking. So they will not join. You see, see they are still saying it. What's <laughs> <laughs> it's because you don't know how man is wired to think. The man mourned his sorrow, but he's designed as a hunter. We must move again. That's why, ladies, you're not told to toss a guy. If you toss a guy, you, you'll mourn for two years. Because you're not wired to process it the way the guy processed it. But there's nothing wrong with the way the women think. It's their own. So my point is that if I am the guy, because I know women. I will not do what he did. But not because anything is wrong. Did you get where I'm going? There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, in the spirit of love, if it's not your spec, you are a sister. Walk in love. Help him get a wife. I don't know if you understand. But, but like I said, I will not do it because I know the way the woman is wired to think and feel. So I will not do that thing that guy did. But I will not do it not because what the guy did was but just because so why I said that to say there are so many ways I relate with my wife or talk. Let's say we had an argument, I had to readjust my argument. I said, no, this is what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, eh? 
This is what I'm saying is that end is that make peace with all men. I don't understand. Make peace with all men because I know if we follow, there's a way her feeling was getting into this matter. The matter is supposed to be logical, but she was not. She was. <laughs> so I knew that we have gotten to that place where you have to recalibrate. You, have, you are not talking to a guy, you are talking to a woman. So I love you, baby. Amen. Say amen. But I think it's good for what something. When you, when, you're, when, you, when you are getting married, realize that there's a way the women think. It's different from the way the men think. Are you following? It's different. So some things they do to us is normal. But I can't do it. Like a few days ago, she was really hurry, I mean, busy in one training and all that. So she called me and said, there's this food that they made. So it, it sounded like the food was made the previous year, two days before. But that they warm it and give it to me. I said, ah, I will not eat food that is two days ago. So I will not eat. When I say I will not eat, she said, okay, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> Do you understand? She said, I'll talk to you later. I said, okay, we'll talk later. Then I left. Then later we actually met. Then I said, <laughs> you see the way you say you talk to me later and it, everything is okay. If I'm the one that mistakenly under the same circumstance flip the table, ever say talk to you later, that war will not finish. I don't understand. So because she's a woman, I will not, I will not make mistake to do what she did. I said, oh, okay, you don't, okay, it's okay. Um, I'll call everybody who can buy food from wherever she likes. Or well, do you, do you, are you following? Have you asked the lady what's the problem? And she said, there's no problem. Have you ever asked? And it is with every woman. Husband, no. When they say there's no problem. You have lived with this man for a long time. Your, the face is more than what she just said. You saw that the face, there's a problem. Don't say she said there's no problem. That thing that you say is your problem already. What's the problem? No problem. And her face, you can see that you have been married with this woman for two years. This is not the face of no problem. My brother, keep your car key on the ground. Sit down. Say, listen, listen. I'm very serious. Because you go, you just walk, some guys will go, and then come and tell me. But I asked her, what's the problem? He said, there's no problem. Oh, brother. You should understand the way the woman thinks. That no problem means sit down, dig deep. And they like it that you're digging. And no, 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 no. Maybe if I'm the problem now, I just forget. What's the problem? I said, no problem. No, no. See your face. I don't like this face when it's like this. Then her body will come down. I like to see this face. Like my wife, I'll tell her, one of the charm when I get married to you is your smile. Don't lose it. Keep my heart linger, linger. Put up this smile. That you are looking like this and say, no problem. No, there's a problem. I don't even understand. This conversation is so that I'll come back home and sleep well. Amen. Okay. This year I'm taking my message, but let me come back. But I think a brother needed to hear this. Amen. Live with your wife according to what? It's important too. That's what the Bible. I'm, I just. That's what the Bible says. Live with your wife with intelligent recognition that they are weaker vessels. And listen to me. If you don't learn this, it will affect your prayers. It will affect your prayers. Your prayers will not have the full capacity, the result you're supposed to bring. So it looks like you're struggling to make things work, because the role of the woman in your life spiritually is very dangerous. Say amen. Say amen. So we'll do that so that um. When I lift up holy hands, Jehovah knows that something is going to happen. Amen. Not because I am a weak man, but because I just have brought myself under the governance of God's word to act upon it, to live with your wife according to knowledge. Study them. Know them. Are you and then particularly not just the generic nature of a woman, but your wife. Your own wife. Say amen. Hello. Say, I mean, say your own wife. You must know exactly her peculiarity, as long as that is not sin against God, please do it. Amen. amen. Say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Oh, where are we? Amen. He said we're in church. Did somebody say that? <laughs> Praise God. Anyway, Jesus eventually, let me tell the story in Luke 24. Jesus now told them, are you guys Let's read it. Let me just read it. Let's read it. 
Now, verse 25 now. Then he said unto them, O fools and slow of heart, to believe all that the prophet have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. He began to talk to them about himself. And the Jew now unto the village where they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they've constrained him and saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took the bread, he blessed it, he broke it, and he gave it unto them. And their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. That bread broken, that Death broken is Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection in demonstration. The moment that happened, their eyes were open. They could see that it was Jesus. What Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection has brought to us is that our eyes be open. I pray for you, your eyes be open. Receive descending heart. Receive descending heart. I said receive descending heart. I said receive, receive descending heart. In the mighty name of Jesus. Proverbs 2020, you're going to pray very brief, briefly. Proverbs 2020. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Rande Brokosi Kabarali Mada Satava. Is that? Sorry. Proverbs 2012. Everyone, can we read together? One, two, three, go. The hearing ear and the seeing eyes, the Lord had made both of them. The ability to see, the ability to hear is God that gives it. Say in the name of Jesus. By the blood sacrifice of Jesus on my behalf. By the power of the endless life in the blood of Jesus. I receive hearing ear. I receive seeing eyes. In the name of Jesus, every symptom of blindness, of blindfold, every symptom of deafness to spiritual realities right now be removed in the name of jesus lord i receive my eyes open my ears unstopped in the mighty name of jesus in the next 30 second pray the holy ghost and make those declaration i can't hear some of you reach out to the one who has given you sight who has given you ears to hear no more deafness in this house in the name of jesus Oh, this is what Jesus died. That your eyes be open to see. From today, receive opportunities open to you. See opportunities where men can't see. Let your eyes be open to see. Receive discernment. Oh, la rabata shatala brada baba. Oh, ranto sako tali bregedi baranto sako tala bradi baraba talaba. Oh, ratali barando shkatala baya. Receive our eyes open. Our ears open. Ne mando shkabaliba. In your investment, receive your eyes open. In your relationship, receive your eyes open. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. That's what Jesus died for. We receive our eyes open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It changes what comes to a man's life. So God called the children of Israel and told them, I'm taking you to a land that flows with milk and honey. I'm taking you to a land of great bounties. And I'll send my angels before you to drive out the Hebrew, the, the Perizzite, the Canaanites, and I will displace them and I will plant you. Everything was God. I will do that for you. I will put my fear before you. So that everybody who sees you will be afraid of you. This is what God told them. Then just about they were just by the borders of the promised land so moses sent out spies according to the instruction of god's 12 spies in numbers chapter 13 to go into the land that flow with milk and honey and spy out the land and bring back reports the bible says that 12 of them went into that land and searched out the land and they returned they returned 12 of them oh god only two 
saw what God saw. The rest saw what is visible. The rest, they couldn't see beyond their nose. And the Bible said what they saw was an evil report. And guess what? Because of this report, instead of God asking them to march straight into it, the Bible said God turned them back into the wilderness. They were going round, round, same place. And unfortunately, you're going round one spot and you do not know you're not making progress. You do not know. Do you understand? You're filled with daily activity. Not making progress. Going round to the last person who could not see that vision died. All of them died. Their carcasses were wasted in the wilderness. Guess the people who, was, who were able to go. Those who could see. Joshua and Caleb. They were the only ones who could see the vision of God. And because of what they saw, they experienced what they saw. They entered into that land. And these men went there when they were 40. Are you following? And 40 years later, Caleb could still see. He said, 40 years ago, when we returned, this mountain was given to me. 80 plus years now, as my strength was in me, that's how it is now. Give me command. We'll go to this mountain. We will take it. That's for those who can see. Let your eyes be open to see. Every confusing vision of hell, of hell, of hell Walking against you right now. Be broken. Be broken. Every vision you have inherited from your ancestors that limits progress today by the authority in the name of Jesus. Be broken. I command that your eyes be open to see heaven's vision. See heaven's vision. See heaven's vision. See the mighty harvest and escalated fever. There's nobody here. There's one man in Israel. Even the things you say in your bed chamber, he hears it. And the king says, now send two to go and capture and arrest Elisha. When they came to arrest Elisha, the servant of um, Elisha woke up. You know, this servant had no name. Because remember, Gehazi had just died. So this servant had no name. Amen. Oh, I won't be distracted. Amen. But the servant had no name. The servant lifted up his voice and said, See, alas, master, we are surrounded. And the master said, Oh, Lord, open this boy's eyes so that he can see that they that are with us are more than they that be with them. I personally believe that Elisha was not seeing the physical vision that that servant saw. I believe that Elisha was persuaded in the promises of God that gives greater vision. I believe that he could see that we are not ordinary. You know, there's some scripture that just opens you up like that. You know, over the week we're praying and that scripture has stayed with me. The Lord have chosen Jacob unto himself. Israel, he has this chosen for his peculiar treasure. And I began to look at it and realize that now Israel does not exist. You are the Israel of God. So I put it this way, that God have chosen me unto himself. He has chosen Emmanuel for his peculiar treasure. Even your laptop. I mean, some people put laptop. You run back and say, put the laptop very well. So, peculiar treasure. You're going to get military forces to guard it. So, you know what I began to see? I'm God's peculiar treasure. Don't play with me. My father has deployed troops to protect his treasure. That's what he has done for you. You are his peculiar treasure. I say you are his peculiar treasure. But your eyes were open to see. And they saw. And like that, the illustrations we, we were sharing. You know, beyond the greater visions, is that as you're sitting in church every day, as you walk every day, the pastor was preaching and now said, some of you, the next person, the person that is sitting next to you might be the miracle that your heart has been looking for. Are you following? And all that. And it's true. Maybe they just seated beside somebody, but not being sensitive. You may not know. And then, in once part of the hall, a very wealthy man was sitting. If I is a billionaire. Was sitting beside a lady. 
But this man was very short. Amen? I was not decently dressed. And God spoke to the man and said, Ask this young girl, whatever she asks, give her. Whatever. Blank check. If she wants a house, buy her a house. Whatever she wants. So the man turns to this girl and greeted and said, Is there anything that you think I can bless you with? What the girl first did was look him up and down and size him and said, There's nothing. He further probed. He said, I, he said There's nothing. That's how he left. Because he said, you know why she did that? From her optical interpretation. First, the guy is shot. She's suspecting. I know the next thing he's going to say right now. He's going to tell me I want to marry you. And he refused the man. And the man left. And the man was wealthy in billions. That means if it was a house, he would have bought it. But what was really the problem? It's a close heart. It's undiscerning eyes. It's the eyes that cannot see opportunity. But the flip of it was that in White House also, a man has been trying every time to see the president. And it's been impossible because the matter he wanted to present to before the president. So one day in the gate, frustrated, he was crying. And a little boy, about 12 years old, comes to the man and stands and says, what's the problem, sir? And the man looked at this little boy and took out time to explain all his problem to a little boy. As I've been here, I've been trying to see Mr. President, but I'm wishing that any of these guys can pay attention, but they are not. He was talking to a little boy. He didn't know the boy. The little boy said, follow me held the man by the hand. The man just realized that as he entered, the gates were opening. So he brought the man before the president and said, Daddy, this man wants to see you. But this is the point. I don't know whether I, when you are heavy sorrow, a little 12-year-old will be asking, boy, pass it. Is that not what you say? We're talking about serious thing, yeah. <laughs> but it's blessedness to see opportunity when they open. Your eyes be open today. Receive your eyes open today. Receive your eyes open today. And that's why Jesus died. That your eyes be open to see. You will see what God is saying. You will hear what God is saying. You will do what God. You know, I was praying about this, this message, you know, and I sat here after she finished singing that song. The Lord told me. Call those who are sick and lay hands on them. I don't think I've done that since we came here. <laughs> but I was sensitive. And I knew when I touched somebody, I knew this person was a person. But see how the power of God works? It will do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask, think, or imagine. Receive receptive heart. Receive seen eyes. Let your eyes be open to see. Let your ears be open to hear. Say, Lord, I receive eyes that see. I receive ears that hear in the mighty name of Jesus. Hold the neighbor. Tell the neighbor. Neighbor. Can you hold the neighbor? Hold the neighbor. Neighbor. I join my faith with you today. Every symptom of blindness. I say hold in twos. In twos please. Kora baradava kata kasusu preti labayata. In twos. It's in the name of Jesus. I stand in faith with you today. From today, receive the heavenly visions. Let your eyes see accurately. Let your ear hear accurately. In the mighty name of Jesus, every covering cast over your life, over your eyes, be pulled off, be removed. In the name of Jesus, see to make profit. See to God's glory. Right now, in the name of Jesus, pray for the next 30 seconds for your neighbor. Hallelujah. And everyone online, let your eyes be open to see. Let your ears be open to see. That's why Jesus died. He's alive, so let your eyes be open to see. Let me pray earnestly. 
Some of you recognize your wife. You recognize your husband. You recognize the business opportunity. Your eyes will be open to see. You will see money where people can't see money. Oh, hallelujah. Lebra Kalaban Talaba. Receive the sending hearts today. Ma Tori Bregedi Bayata Kasusu Paralimadayata. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. I don't know if you believe you received. Now you give him thanks. Thank him. I say thank him. That's how we receive. Give him thanks. Lord, we praise you. In Jesus' mighty name. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. If you have your tithe, come forward. The rest of you prepare your offering. Oh, rala barato zeko tele barabala. Kora para barbara bakataba. He's alive and he lives inside of me. He's called me and made me his own. He's made a way where there seems to be no way. He's alive and he lives inside of me. He's alive, he's alive. He's alive and he lives inside of me. He's alive and he lives inside of me. He's called me. He's called me and made me his own. He's made a way. He's made a way where the sins to be no way. He's alive and he lives inside of me. Hallelujah. See, I'm trying to say in the name of Jesus. The heavens are open over me. The rain of God's spirit is upon my land. Say, I am the field that the Lord has blessed. The Lord has blessed me with the dew of heaven, with the fatness of the earth, with plenty of corn and wine. Today I receive greater vision, bigger visions. I see what God sees. I hear what God hears. In the name of Jesus, devour us I rebuked on my behalf in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I smell well. I smell nice. And I lift my hands to El Elyon, the most high God, in Jesus' mighty name. The tent is received in the name of Jesus. He's made of the weather seems to be no way. He's alive in the knees of time. He's alive, he's alive He's alive And he lives inside of me He's called me He's called me And made me his own He's made a way He's made a way Where there seems to be No way He's alive And he lives inside of me Hallelujah Say amen Let's rise up with our offering as we honor the Lord. Say amen. Can you just worship God with your offering? Thank him for dying for you. Thank him for being buried for you. Thank him for rising in victory for you. And in turn, you rose with him. Go ahead. Can you just worship God with your substance? Honor him with your offering. Honor him with the first fruit of your increase. Amen. Can I hear? Open your mouth. Just worship him. Kora Borokosi Katalabra. Katosia Mandebayata. Lord, we give you praise. Father, thank you for the precious gift of your people. Or the words that you receive from every giver here today. Amen. You give seed to the sower and bread to the eater.
then you multiply our seed so and you increase the fruit of our righteousness. In honor, we have come to worship you and we thank you today in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead and give. I know he rescued my soul. He's God has covered my sins. I believe. I believe. I believe. My shame is taken away. And my pain is healed in a place. Particularly, no, today doubles for Thanksgiving and Resurrection Sunday. Today is the day you need to lose it. Are you following? I'm marking some of your dance steps. I'll present it to God. Are you following? I said, Lord, behold, last dance. Hmm? Don't let your shoe disturb you. We're going to thank him. We're going to do what? We're going to thank him. Thank him in ways that you have not done this month. Say amen. He has been faithful to us. Say amen. With a grateful heart, we have come to say thank you. We have come to say thank you. And praise is a weapon. Praise is your fighting weapon. As you break loose today, Satan himself will be confused on your behalf. In the name of Jesus. So we're going to praise God. We're going to thank him. We're going to dance. I know some of you are going to transmit your offering by electronically. Whether you did it, eh? when it's time, just join the line. Amen? Dance. David danced before God. And he was a king. The king of the chosen race. Dance. When his clothes was falling off, he wasn't bothered. 
The Bible used to tell that he was actually naked. It was just what was under that was there. He was still dancing. 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 And when they were, they kept what he told them, this God had left your father and chose me. Where was your father's house? When he took me from the back side of the wilderness. Some of you, all you need to think, all you need to do is to think and see what God has done for you. On Thursday, I was saying it. That nature is gifted to us. You should look at the flowers and rejoice. Look at the heavens. You know, it's worries that make you not see the environment to enjoy it. To actually come out of your house and just breathe in fresh air. And say, this is free. Free. Very free. Are you following? Look at the mountains and say, God, place this in his place. See the bears and appreciate the handy works of God. Then see your life. You can breathe in and breathe out. Some of you right now, you want me to close this service because you want to go and eat Easter rice. That appetite to eat Easter rice is a gift. Thank him that at least there's something inside you that wants to eat food. And you can put food into enter your mouth. Thank him that you are alive. And you can lift your hands. And after lifting it, it will not stay there. You can bring it down. Thank him for his faithfulness. You know, like I said on, on Thursday, sometimes, do you know when we thank God? Maybe you were driving, your car just screamed, you, you, you almost, like one day, well, I was coming from the airport, I think I went to drop my wife, I didn't tell her this story. And I was rushing home. So I took the Zuba axis, I was rushing home. I was, I, I stopped doing that thing, but I don't know why I did that day. One guy overtook me. And I was alone talking in tongue. I followed him. I just flooded the car and passed him. I was looking at my memory. He was behind me. He was, I was just, as I just passed Zuba and Day Day. You know, just after Day Day, there's this place you have U turn where the cars can turn, just before the Mopo Barak. I saw this truck with um, this bamboo tree, those trucks. Waiting to cross. He was waiting for me. Do you know when I came close, he just entered. At that speed. I don't want to tell you the speed. The car did like this. Ooh, 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 ooh. Then I passed. I began, my tongue was louder. But I slowed down for the guy to pass. As he passed, I, I just did him like this. Just I don't know where, I don't even know where the guy is going to. And we're running like that. So, so, so some presence is when you come there you now need as a Lord I thank you I give you praise but what you don't know is that every day he delivered you from such circumstances and you didn't even see it or maybe you were so sick you almost died then somewhere you just came out of sickness I was telling mommy Garpia now you know she's going to tell her story herself but she was already at me herself when they were going to take out those, people have told so many stories. So she was afraid. Satan was painting the picture. This might be your last. So she has called the son. She's telling the son everything that she has. Her land. Everything just in case. Eh? You're telling them who to meet, where not, not to meet. Then one of those days, Pastor Peter told her. All this, I said, have you called Pussy? Then she called me and said she was coming to the house. To come and see me. I said, where, where are you? She said, at home. I said, just wait for now. I'm coming to meet you at home. So I came to her house and sat down. When I came to her house, I knew this visit cannot be brief visit. You know, you just sit down and gist. I came around the evening. I gisted till almost midnight in that house. The purpose of that gist is that something will dispel fear. When I saw it happen, I left her. The next day, she went to be prepared so I went to the hospital and everywhere where post even my cousin who was helping her run around. My cousin just told me, uh, what, what is your church member? I said, yes. What's the problem? I said, I want to remove something here. He said, What is it? I called the name. He said, Ah, I was just this car I'm driving. I seconded somebody, he's a driver. The person I seconded died of this tino as they operated the thing. They operated it. The person began to talk like a little baby. As they tried to correct little baby, the person couldn't breathe. So I stayed with her from morning till around 4.35. I just stayed with her. 
all around. She, she got to her room. I was just chasing. And you know, those kind of things that take your heart out. In fact, we began to chase about somebody else. So that fear is gone. Then the next day, the procedure was there. The moment she came out, and the moment she came out, she asked of me. I was standing there. I came, laid hands on her. And then, God miraculously quickened the process. She came out. Then she breathed down. I was wondering why she was afraid because everything changed. You can't tell. I'm saying you don't have to go through that process. Are you following? Rejoice in the Lord your God. Today is our Thanksgiving. Are you reading? They just evacuated and you're feeling depressed. Some people didn't make the, the evacuation. They didn't make it. They didn't make it. I, I don't understand. They didn't make the evacuation. I've seen all kinds of medical carelessness. You know how the a, a girl, this girl was my then she moved to a lorry. Had her first child, second child, third child. And then, yeah, I think, they, yeah, this her third child. Then she, she gave birth to a, a baby boy and then began to bleed. The husband had an idea of what could be. So the husband came and said, remove this womb, remove the womb. We don't want any child again. Remove this womb because doctors know that's the short, that's the shortest cut to, to stop the bleeding. Just remove the womb. Remove everything. The doctor said, no, 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 you're emotional. You are, you are. The guy, you know, the guy said, remove this womb. He's my wife. And then he did and died. I want to tell you that you have every reason to thank him. If you can talk, thank him. If you can lift your hands, praise him. If you can dance, bless him. But today I wanted to thank him for his faithfulness. Thank him for his faithfulness. And above all, thank him that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Because Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Now lift up your tents, giving offering as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, with gratitude in our hearts, we want to give you our five loaves and two fish. Multiply it. We are grateful to you for your goodness. We say thank you. In various ways, in our singing, in our clapping, in our dancing, in our misbehavior, receive it as sacrifice of praise from us. We rejoice in you. Thank you because every seed is multiplied and you're increasing the fruit of our righteousness in Jesus' mighty name. Go ahead and give. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise in the house. Are you shouting? For the days of my life, I've searched around. Now I know you. God has given you victory. Come on, the Lord has given you victory. God has given you victory. Come on, the Lord has given you victory. God has given you victory. Come on, the Lord has given you victory. He has given you victory. He has given you victory. Oh, I sing hallelujah. For the night that I live, oh Lord, oh, I throw a salute. For your money, 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 blessings, I throw a salute. Oh Lord, for your money, 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 blessings, I throw a salute. Hey! 
hear you now. Come on, what's that? Since I was born.
Praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Can we give the Lord a shout? Hallelujah. Glory to your holy name. Thank you. We are grateful. Amen. How many of you saw the dance here? But in the spirit of my message, the women won. Did you get that? Yes, yes. 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 Let me hear all the men clap for the women. Hallelujah. Father, I will give you praise. Amen and amen. Nibiam. Eh? <laughs> not in this house. <laughs> they said they did not bring the ability to shake out. Not in this house. <laughs> Say amen. Father, we thank you. Father in heaven, how we love you. We lift your name, lead on the earth. Your people, we do your mighty work. Oh, blessed be the Lord, oh, God, God Almighty, who has a need and is in love. Hallelujah, blessed be the Lord, yeah, the Lord Almighty. Yes, 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 yes. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you. So, I have good news, amen. Wedding, wedding, wedding. Ah, as you know, that we're in the end times. They shall be married and given in marriage. Then you know we are in the end time. Say amen. But today, particularly today, is special to me, amen. Because I'm about to give a very precious daughter out. Very precious. And it's because also, the husband to be somebody who has found favor with me. It was the most very difficult decision to make. Very, very. But I know that it was something we need to do. Amen. Because the person I'm talking about is a daughter in whom I love and that is well pleasing to me. You understand? You know, when you come to a house, you try to catch the spirit of the house. Some of you here have caught it, but a lot still need to catch it. But one person who has caught my spirit is Dr. Kim. Amen. And she'll be getting married on the 14th of this month. Amen. Right here in this hall, the evening of the 14th. Amen. But next Friday is her traditional wedding. In our choir bomb, amen. Say amen. So today, I'm going to present them to house, and I beg of you, stand in faith with them. Show them love, amen. Let this wedding be glorious, amen. Say amen. So today, I want to invite Pastor Datsin and Dr. Tom Kim. Please put your hands together as they come. Please come. Hallelujah. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has done. What we waited for.
So, I present to you the husband to be and the wife to be. Amen. If you have anything against them from getting married, keep it to yourself. <laughs> I know you didn't expect me to say that, amen. Praise God. I prayed. They finished their counseling this week, amen. And their court wedding was on Thursday. Thursday, yes, Thursday. So traditionally they'll be married on Friday. And then on Sunday of the 14th in the evening we'll be here for the wedding. Those of you who can travel to Uyo, please travel. I heard that she's told you people in prayers not to come. It's a lie. Are you following? No, I'm, I, I, what I'm saying is that statement has been overridden. Amen? Say amen. Say amen. We shall come, yes. Amen. Let's stand in faith with them. Can you stretch your hands towards them as we pray? Please, let's pray. Let's pray. One thing is to just get married. The other is to live the life. Let the mercy of God prevail over this home. Let the light of God shine upon them. Let his purpose and counsel prevail. I can't hear some of you pray. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Manatosi kelebron do bro bo kosi kalabara da bosa Manatosi kete kelebron to sako talaba Pray for God's mercy upon them Pray for financial mercy material mercy We are in faith that after the wedding there will be left leftover on every side financial leftover material leftover leftover on every side we Receive every one single need met every debt paid there are no deaths in the place. In the mighty name of Jesus. They find mercy at every turn. They receive day by day help. 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 In the name of Jesus. They are helped until they are strong. They are strengthened. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And we present these ones before you. Let the hand of the Lord rest upon you. Let his mercy establish this home in the mighty name of Jesus. Let wisdom mark you out. Let discretion be everything in your home. Let it be a model for homes in the mighty name of Jesus. Two of you swallow your word. Make a mark on destiny and in time in the name of Jesus. Let the strength of this house rest upon you. My God prosper you. The angel of my journey go before you. Make every crooked path straight. Receive unusual favor, escalated favor. Lord, we command today unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, and unusual access upon you in Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for them as they return to their seat. Congrats. So please stand in faith with them. Congrats. Amen. Please clap, clap, clap. Amen. So if you wanted to marry him came and you did not talk on time, it's late. And if you liked Dr. Daxin, oh, Pastor Daxin, amen. It's gone, amen. Praise God. So, like a GPR, recalibrate, amen. And be redirected, praise God. I will look forward to that day gloriously, amen. Say amen. amen. Father, will thank you. Um. Okay, is it today we'll cut the birthday cake? Is it here? So let it come. If your birthday is in March, please can you just come forward? The March celebrant. Even if there's no cake, come. Amen. Put your hands together as the March celebrants come.
happy birthday. Hosanna, yeah, Hosanna, Hosanna, na na we kele mo, ebi e bo se mo ke kere ma, eh oh, Hosanna, yeah, Hosanna, eh, Hosanna, na na we kele mo, ebi e bo se mo ke kere ma, eh oh. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday. March is a good month. Can you stretch your hands and just pray for them? Begin to pray. Stretch your hands. Pray. Pray. Can I hear you pray? We mark their special day today as a church. Lord, we give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. I speak the life and strength of God upon you. I speak that favor that nobody can stand before you. Be preferred above all. I said be preferred above all. Let the hearts of men be open to you. Receive that unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, and unusual access. Welcome into your mighty harvest. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive strength, receive life. The Lord quicken the process for you. In the name of Jesus, receive the multiplier effect. Let the lifting power of God rest upon you and lift you beyond this level. In Jesus' mighty name. Happy birthday. Put your hands together for them as they return. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We will run and not grow weary. Without taking much of our time, um, I have a very short assignment to welcome some very special sets of people in our midst this morning. So if you're here and you're worshiping with us for the first time in the fortified city, may I see your hands up? Anybody worshiping with us for the first time in the fortified city? Hallelujah. Jam those hands together Let for them. Hands bless. Please bless. pick up your Bible bless. your pack. Say bless. And be blessed. Say bless. Blessed, your blessed, your blessed, the city said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We cast down every struggle, sickness, and poverty for the devil is dead. On behalf of our senior pastors, Reverend Emmanuel Opara and Reverend Ifejola, Reverend Ifejola Opara, I want to welcome you to the fortified city. I hope you've had an amazing time so far. I'm sure you were, they didn't mention to you when you came in, but the moment you stepped into this house, you stepped into the house of favor. And that favor will follow you all through this week in the name of Jesus. Amen. Church, let's stretch forth our hands and say a word of prayer for them. 
Kali Bazantaya Brahish Kadas Sintili Brakadosi Yakatoza. Oh Barahish Kadoza, thank you, Father. We are grateful for this love that you've added unto us. Parish Katoza Kali Brahish Kadoza Kali Brakatoza. Oh, thank you, sweet Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus, we have prayed. I declare unusual kindness unto you this week in the name of Jesus. Experience unusual access and unusual acceptance in the name of Jesus we have prayed. Amen. So we meet here every Sunday like this, um, 9 a.m. to um, 11 p.m. 11 a.m. We also meet here on Thursdays at 5.30 p.m. It's always, always, always an amazing service. I want to specially invite you to that service. It's a transformational one and God will bless you as you honor it in the name of Jesus. Amen. So we have prepared a light reception for you and this beautiful sister over there will take you to the reception we have prepared for you. Church, please jam those hands together for them as they make their way to Late the reception. Late in the midnight hour I say Who's got a way Yes, so we rise up to our feet as we close the service. Hold your neighbor to the left and to the right. We are of the Father. We are joined We are the Son. We are children of this King. from the face of the earth with the strength of God in our hearts and the word of God in our mouths with the word of God in our hearts and the strength of God in our mouths going to and through the face of the earth giving effective leadership to our generation glory thank you you're free to go